Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's video lecture. And we continue covering um, the central nervous system. And uh, we're going to talk about spinal cord in this lecture. Um, so the first part of this PowerPoint was about uh, brain. And um, I recorded another video to cover the brain. So I'm just going to move where we have spinal cord and Let's go ahead and begin. So spinal cord, the same as your brain, is a part of the central nervous system. And um, spinal cord, I'm going to pick up my, my pen. Uh, it begins at the foramen magnum and ends at conus medullaris, at approximately L1 vertebra, so lum lumbar 1. We have five lumbar vertebra. So you can see that your spinal cord is shorter than your vertebral column. And foramen, foramen magnum is um, this uh, big opening in the occipital bone, right? So below this foramen magnum, up to this conus medullaris, right? Where, uh, that is located at a level of L1, L1 vertebra. A function provides two-way communication to and from the brain and contains spinal reflex centers. Uh, inferior part of the spinal cord is made, um, well, spinal co cord ends at the conus medullaris. So below it, we have spinal nerves that form structures that is called coda iguina. So it's a bundle of nerves. And those nerves, you can see from this point, goes all the way down, right, to the sacrum and coccyx. But this is not part of the spinal cord. Those are spinal nerves. Um, so let's look at cross section of the spinal cord. Um, so you can see it's divided into right and left part, um, divided by anterior um, medial fissure right here. So it's an anterior part, so it's this separation, and posterior median sulcus. So that would be right there. Now, the difference between sulcus and uh, fissure is that fissure is just a, a deeper sulcus. Now, if you look um, at this picture, so this area is shown in a lighter color and this in a darker color. This is actually white matter, and this is gray matter. Now, on this diagram below, it's vice versa. Um, just because um, a special dye was used, and um, white matter pick up, picked up this dye better. So white matter um, is this darker parts. Just remember, white matter is outside, and gray matter is inside. Um, now, right inside this gray matter, you see central canal, and you would find cerebrospinal fluid inside this canal. Now, those are called horns. So we have posterior gray horn, um, right and left. We have anterior gray horn. And in some area of spinal cord, in the thoracic area, you will have also lateral gray horn. Now, posterior, you can replace with dorsal, and anterior, you can replace with ventral. So it's a dorsal gray horn or, horn or posterior gray horn. Um, now, this posterior horns, uh, they are for sensory information. So you will receive your sensory information through the posterior horn and anterior for motor uh, output. Right. So if you want to, you know, uh, if you want to move your uh, muscles, right, so that uh, information will uh, leave spinal cord uh, from the anterior gray horn. And, uh, you know, it will be a nerve, that nerve will, will go and innervate your muscles. Um, so this is a very nice uh, Diagram. It's not a diagram. It's actually a model that um, you know. In some colleges, we have it. Um, we have this model. It's very nice because it shows you um, location of spinal cord. So that's your spinal cord, and again, you have cross section over here, and uh, it's located in 
inside vertebral uh, cavity. Um, so that's a vertebra, right? So that's a bone. And uh, you can see pretty much the um, same structure and more of what we already uh, looked at. So here's our anterior median fissure right here. This is our posterior median sulcus. Um, so that's our white matter over here. This is a gray matter. And we have posterior gray horn. We have anterior gray horn. We have lateral gray horn. Um, now uh, here's a central canal. Um, this gray area that connects uh, right and left part of the spinal uh, cord is called gray commissure. But what is nice about this diagram is that, is that you can see covering of the spinal cord, right? So that's um, actually um, this blue structure over here. That's a pia matter. And this is meninges. Meninges are a membrane covering the brain, right? So that's a pia matter. Um, then uh, you have arachnoid matter. Is this a blue part over here? Now this is called a sub arachnoid space. Um, I'm trying to see if you have this uh, labeling here or not, but this is sub arachnoid space. And this is where cerebra uh, spinal fluid is. Um, and then uh, we have this membrane over here that is a dura matter or tough covering. Those are meninges. So we have three meninges, dura, arachnoid, and pia matter. And um, this area over here is epidural space. And you can see that epidural space has uh, veins and a lot of adipose tissue. So if you heard about epidural, um, this is anesthetic uh, um, that is administered in this space, right, uh, in this uh, uh, area to block uh, sensation um, from spinal cord to your uh, brain, right? So we have subarachnoid uh, space and epidural space, mm, right? So, and another thing over here we can see, um, we can see this yellow structure, those are called roots. So we have again, posterior root and anterior root and then those two roots come together, right, forming the uh, spinal nerve. So that's the beginning of spinal nerve. And spinal nerve then innervate your, um, you know, all your body structure, including your muscles and um, your skin, you know, and uh, also your um, some uh, internal structure of your body, right, like your. Uh, internal organs, <laughs> sorry. Right, so, okay, so see, if we cover enough or um, in this picture, right, I think we cover pretty much everything, um, right? So white matter, gray matter, our horns, our gray commissure, central canal, um, our posterior root, anterior root, and then spinal, um, spinal uh, nerve. Um, and three meninges. We have pia matter, we have arachnoid, we have dura, and we have subarachnoid, a space where uh, cerebrospinal fluid is, and epidural space where you have uh, blood vessels and adipose tissue. And this is where epidural is administered. Right. Okay. Um, so next. Next, the, um, net, next, let's see how your spinal cord function. Again, it's a very uh, quick introduction. Um, so what you see shown in blue, green, yellow, and red colors, those are actually um, axons of uh, different neurons. So remember, neuron has a you know, cell body and long axon. And then you have dendrites. Um, but um, so this long process is called axons. And what is shown here in blue, green, yellow, and red, those are axons. 
Uh, and this part, remember, those are our rules. Uh, so we have our um, dorsal root and ventral root, or posterior and anterior roots. And um, these neurons in a dorsal root, they are sensory neurons. And neurons in the ventral root are motor neurons. Right, so your sensory information uh, travels from periphery towards your spinal cord, right, like this, uh, through the um, dorsal root to the dorsal horn, from a dorsal root to the dorsal horn. Uh, and why we have two different colors? Because one represents somatic sensory, this one gonna reach your consciousness. So you will understand this one and it, it will come from your uh, skin, uh, muscles, uh, joints, and visceral information shown here with this green color, it also reaches your spinal cord through the dorsal horn and dor dorsal root first uh, and dorsal horn. But this one comes from your internal organs that we call viscera. And um, it will be easy, you will not understand this information or uh, like some visceral pain, you will feel it, but it will not be precisely defined what area it's coming from, right? So we kind of say that somatic sensory information reaches your consciousness and visceral do not, but they both reach your brain, right? But somatic sensory reaches your cerebral cortex, right? So you receive this sensory information, then um, those green neurons are interneurons and they send uh, impulse to motor neurons. So over here shown in red is somatic motor neuron. That means this one gonna innervate your skeletal muscles and you will have conscious control of it. And the yellow one is your visceral motor neuron. So it will innervate your smooth muscle and cardiac muscle and you will not have uh, conscious control, right? So posterior horn, sensory processes, anterior horn, motor signals. So those are horns. Right, And we do have lateral horn in some area of the spinal cord that is um, a sympathetic division of autonomic nervous system. Um, that means this is um, motor, um, uh, motor information, right? And sympathetic um, when you um, under stress. So when you under stress from this lateral horn, right, this, this yellow one, uh, will originate from lateral, lateral horn and it will innervate your um, uh, viscera, right? Uh, like for example, your um, smooth muscles in your blood vessels uh, or your uh, muscles that contract or dilate your pupil or your um, digestive system your digestive glands, right? So that's where this visceral motor neuron uh, goes. Um, so we look at gray. Um, so the previous previous one, um, all those horns, um, a gray matter of spinal cord, but we also have white matter. And white matter is divided into columns. Um, so of course, um, those white matter, um, but it's white matter, but it's shown here in blue and red uh, color. Why? Because blue represent ascending tracks. Ascending means information goes towards your brain. And red shows you descending. Uh, in, in, impulse goes uh, from the brain, right? From the spinal cords towards the, uh, the periphery. Now, um, this blue ascending track, they are sensory sensory drugs, and um, we have many of them, but let's just remember few. So we have dorsal white column over here, dorsal white column. We have spina um, cerebellar tract, and we have spinothalamic tract. So spina, uh, spinothalamic means information will go from spinal cord to the thalamus, and spina cerebellar from spinal cord to cerebellum, right? And dorsal white column, information will go to your cerebral cortex. Um, in a descending tract, we have um, 
also many different fibers, uh, but we will divide them into pyramidal and uh, extra pyramidal tracts that will be shown in the next um, slides, right? So even, um, so let's look over here. Ascending tracts carry sensory information to the brain. Descending tracts carry motor commands from the brain. And we have posterior, anterior, and lateral columns. So we have posterior, anterior, over here, and lateral columns, um, right? And um, in the posterior, we have dorsal, dorsal white column. We have uh, spina cerebellar, cele cerebellar tract and spina thalamic tract. <clears throat> Okay, so here we can see um, this drug that I just mentioned. So two pathway transmit some other sensory information to the sensory cortex via the thalamus. So we have dorsal uh, column, medial meniscus. Oh my goodness, that's this. Um, this is the name, right? Dorsal column, medial meniscus pathways. This is our dorsal. This is this one. Dorsal white column. Dorsal white column. Okay, so so dorsal white column. Um, transmit information about touch and vibration. Spinothalamic pathway uh, from spinal cord to thalamus. And I forgot to tell you that from thalamus, you still you know, go to the cerebral cortex. This will um, this transmit information about pain and temperature. Uh, coarse touch as well. So discriminative touch, um, so when you can just for example, you can tell me if I'm touching you with one finger uh, or with uh, two fingers, that will be your discriminative touch. And uh, coarse touch, uh, you pretty much, you know, if you, if you, if somebody touching you um, pretty close, um, so one stimulus close to another stimulus, you receive it as one, right? So you can, um, we cannot determine. <clears throat> exactly what area is being touched or what area pressure is applied to. Um, anyway, but let's remember just pain and temperature. So um, dorsal white column, touch and vibration, spinothalamic pain and temperature, and spinocerebellum, uh, this information about your muscles and tendon stretch or proprioception proprioception, uh, it's when you can just, you know, when you can feel where your body parts are and you feel it because you know if your muscles are contracted or your tendons are stretched or not. Um, and um, if you look on this area that really explain you how things happen. So for example, you have your touch receptor in the plantar area. So you step on something, right? So this receptor gonna send signal right, towards your spinal cord. And it sends it through the dorsal root to the dorsal horn, all right? And then look, and then information goes up, right? It goes up, 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 all the way to the medulla. Now, um, this neuron, right, this neuron, the first neuron is called first order neuron. It's right here, first order sensory neuron. When it reaches medulla, um, see what happened. It's actually gonna cross. It's called decussate. So it goes from left side to right side. So it decussates. And it synapses with this, well, first it synapses with the second order neuron, right? Second order neuron. And second order neurons and decussates. It moves on the opposite side of the spinal cord. And it's continue going up. So it's right here. So it's continue go up, 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 up to the thalamus right? And in the thalamus, it connects with the uh, third order neuron, and this one uh, brings information to your cerebral cortex, right? So this is our um, dorsal white column, or dorsal column medial uh, lemniscus pathway, that's appropriate name, but you can just, um, in this class, you just can call it dorsal white column. Right, it's dorsal, it's on the dorsal side, and it's white, and it's look like column. Uh, column. Uh, so again, so we have touch receptor, first order neuron goes all the way to the um, medulla. Or for example, this is your 
joint stretch receptors. So you feel your feelings that you know your joints are stretched. So you know where your fingers are, proprioceptors. So again, we have first order neuron, and again goes to medulla. In medulla synapses with the second order neuron, decussates, move on opposite side and continue moving to the thalamus. Remember, all sensory information except of smell goes to the thalamus. From thalamus, in, in the thalamus, it synapses with a third order neuron and goes to the um, cortex and specifically primary somatosensory cortex. Uh, another one over here, you can see, uh, by the way, uh, spinal cerebellar pathway. Um, so it's from spinal cord to cerebellum. Um, so information from your muscle, um, right, goes um, again to your spinal cord, moving up, 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 and uh, then it terminates in the cerebellum. So it doesn't go all the way to the thalamus. And um, also it... Uh, well, I wanted to say it does not decussate. It actually decussates twice, very often, one time and another time. But uh, information from um, right muscles will be received by right hemisphere of um, cerebellums. Um, so it will not, information will not decussate. So it will be on the same um, side. Um, okay, so next one. We can see spinothalamic tract. Um, so spinothalamic tract over here uh, about temperature and pain. Um, so similar to um, dorsal white column, medial lemniscus pathway, right? Similar. Um, so we also have receptors, for example, in your skin. It moves through the dorsal root to the dorsal horn. Um, it's actually uh, just synapses. Uh, with the second order neuron right away and second order neuron uh, decussate, not in the medulla, but on a mm, spinal cord level. And then it moves towards medulla over here, again, to the thalamus uh, and from the thalamus to the uh, cortex, right? Uh, now, if, if we're moving down, so we're moving down information from your brain to your spinal cord and then to your muscles, for example, right? So those are descending pathway because everything that goes up, right? Everything that goes up from periphery to your brain, right? Here's to your brain. That's going to be your sensory information. Information that goes from brain to your periphery, this will be your motor information. It's a descending pathway and tract. So we have uh, two, direct pathway, pyramidal, and indirect extrapyramidal. Now, pyramidal regulates fast and fine movements, and indirect or extrapyramidal uh, um, regulates your axial muscles, uh, muscles controlling coarse movement, head, neck, eye movements that follow objects. And it's uh, important for your balance and posture. So through the... Um, so for example, if I wanna move my fingers, right? Uh, I'm writing a letter or doing something. If I move my fingers, that information from my brain goes to the muscles that move my fingers through the pyramidal tract. And this is under my constant uh, control, right? Because my fingers, they don't move on its own. So I control when my finger moves and how they move. And I have this pyramidal tract, and this is from cerebral cortex to the muscles. But when I keep my balance or posture, for example, I don't think about it every minute of my life, right? I kind of like uh, control it without really thinking about it. Then those muscles will be innervated um, and, you know, signals will go through extra pyramidal tract. Um, so let's look at the pyramidal and extra pyramidal tract. Now, pyramidal tract are going to begin in, uh, at the level of cortex. So um, all the you know, stuff that you understand received by cortex or originate from the cortex. Because I want to control my muscles, I'm going to uh, start this process from my cortex so I understand, right? So I go... Uh, very much um, 
down, and this is upper motor neuron, right? This is called upper motor neuron. So I continue, continue right there, right there, right there, right? And when I get to the uh, level, um, you know, uh, is a, um, a the spinal cord um, where my, you know, nerves are um, that innervate this particular muscle originate from, or it can be, um, um, you know, let's say at, at the level of the medulla, right? So is at the level of the medulla or at the level of the um, spinal cord, I have decussation. So we don't really need to uh, remember where exactly this decussation happened, uh, but we need to remember that it happens. Um, because your sensory information decussates. That means whatever I touch with my left fingers, uh, I, I receive this information uh, to, to the right hemisphere of my cerebral cortex. And if I want to move my left fingers, uh, the information begins at the right hemisphere. That's what decussation is. So we have the decussation is at medulla level or at the spinal cord level, and then uh, we synapsing there is synapse with the low motor neuron, and sometimes we might have interneuron in between um, those neurons. Right, that's our pyramidal tract. Now, extra pyramidal. The difference is we're gonna start signal not on, uh, in the cortex, so it's not in the cortex. So for example, it can uh, start at midbrain, right? That's why it doesn't require your um, consciousness constantly, right? Like keep your balance of posture. However, you can innervate the same muscle uh, starting with the cerebral cortex because you can move your back, right? But if, if a signal uh, originate in the midbrain, right? It's going to midbrain, um, and it's decussate over here at the level of the uh, uh, medulla. All right, so that's that's already, yeah, so that's midbrain, pons, yeah, I think th this one particular uh, rubrospinal decussate at a level of uh, midbrain. But anyway, it, it, does it does decussate, it moves on the opposite side, it goes down, right? It's uh, synapses with interneuron, then with the low motor neuron and low, low motor neuron innervate your um, skeletal muscles. Right, so um, I just um, want to um, kind of go back for a second um, just to make sense of all this information. Um, so we're talking about spinal cord, right? And uh, when we look at the spinal cord, for example, right here, um, so we see that we have gray matter and we have white matter. So the sensory information uh, is received through the spinal nerves, right? And it goes through the dorsal root of the spinal nerves. And it's, um, um, you know, signal reaches the dorsal horn. That's a gray matter, right? Um, then um, the... Um, motor information, uh, those motor neurons, and you know what those motor neurons, those motor neurons are low motor neurons. So those are low motor neurons. And they, um, their cell bodies are located into ventral horn or lateral horn. And um, axons are located in a, a spinal nerve, right? And those nerves, again, innervate your muscles now. Right, so sensory information goes towards the spinal cord, right? It synapses with interneuron. Um, and um, the motor, in, uh, motor command, um, those neurons are found in the ventral horn right, and go from anterior side. But look, for example, if somebody, um, if, you know, if I cut my, because I don't, I don't want to use this, Oh my goodness, T touch. Let's say I cut myself. So let's say if I cut myself, I cut my finger. So that's information, pain. Pain, um, information about pain goes this way towards the spinal cord, right? Um, then it synapses with interneuron 
and then synapses with motor neuron. And I very quickly move my finger away because if I touch something and it's painful, um, or, um, this again, this information, sensory information reaches my spinal cord and then um, send this signal to my motor neuron of my finger. So I can move away my fingers from this painful uh, stimulus. However, so that's actually a reflex, but if you, you, you do understand pain, you know what's happening. That means that these sensory neurons need to send information up to your brain because you cannot understand anything on a level of a spinal cord. To feel this pain, you need to send this sensory information to your brain. Now, how to send the sensory information to the brain? Well, for that reason, you guys have those white columns and a sending tract right, send information to your brain. Now, what information? Well, it will sell, uh, send information about um, touch and pressure, uh, about uh, temperature and pain, this one, and about uh, position of your muscles and joints. So that's all information will go to your um, uh, cerebral cortex through these ascending drugs, right? Now, what are those that, you know, we cover here? We cover our dorsal white column. We cover spinal thalamic and spinal cerebellar. And uh, when information goes up, we need three cells to do it, right? Three cells. We need uh, first order neuron, we need second order neuron, and we need third order neuron. So information, sensory information from your sensory receptors reaches your cerebral cortex, and we need three neurons to um, sends this information and information will decussate. So information from, uh, I don't know, left side of your body uh, will re be received by right hemisphere, um, right? Now, um, if you decide, um, you know, right there in your cerebral cortex to move your arm or your foot, or your leg, or, or your head, right? Then the motor command start at the level of cerebral cortex. And we need actually uh, two neurons. We can use two neurons, upper motor neuron, right? And uh, so this red one, let's look at the red one. Upper motor neuron, this one, and low motor neuron and you innervate your skeletal muscles. Or it can be three, upper motor neuron, interneuron, and low motor neuron. And the, this drug is descending drug, and this is example of pyramidal drug. Um, so pyramidal drug will um, regulate fast and fine skilled movements. And indirect extrapyramidal tract uh, will regulate, oops, sorry, will regulate your uh, balance and posture, your core, uh, control your coarse muscles, head, neck, eye movements that follow object, not the ones that you intentionally uh, decided to move, then it will be your, you know, pyramidal. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so extrapyramidal, um, your balance and posture and extra pyramidal, for example, over here, you have a uh, rubrospinal tract that's originate in the red nucleus of a midbrain. It's also decussate, it's also decussate. It will have uh, interneuron and then low motor neuron, and here's your muscle innervation. Okay, um, uh, I do understand it's a lot, so I'm gonna stop over here. And I will record another lecture to cover the rest of this material, or maybe I will even divide it into a couple more lectures, right? So um, anyway, this was central nervous system and um, we cover the spinal cord. 
Thank you for watching and I hope it was helpful.